Thank you for your interest in my 34 Ford. Before we look at the car, let me tell you a few things about the car. This is original Georgia rust-free automobile. It was bought by a restorer in Pennsylvania and it had a frame-off restoration less than a year ago. It's an all-steel car, fenders, body, doors, hood, rumble seat lid. It's all genuine 1934 Henry Ford steel. In the restoration, as many new old stock parts that could be found were used rather than reproduction. The car runs and drives great. 1934 Ford is considered by many Ford enthusiasts to be the prettiest and most exciting Ford of the 30s. Now the 34 Ford was certainly a design leader, an award-winning car with a swooping line, two front fenders joining in the center, waterfalls type of action. Accessory-wise, it has a grill guard, two Ford script fog lamps, stainless steel dual horns, stainless steel lamps, and the Lincoln Greyhound. A Ford enthusiast like to use the Lincoln Greyhound, indicating that they had a baby Lincoln. Now, Lincoln is an important. Lincoln, of course, was owned by Ford. 1902, Henry Ford was a head engineer for Cadillac. The Leland brothers bought Cadillac, felt that Henry Ford wanted too much input into the car. It was too aggressive of a personality for them, so they fired him. In 1903, he opened up the Ford Motor Company. By the mid-20s, he was a multi-millionaire, perhaps even a billionaire. And the Lincoln was in trouble. The Leland brothers were in bankruptcy, so Ford bought Lincoln and fired the Leland brothers. Ford was a head of vindictive personality. Now let me take my sunglasses off. I don't. But here in Western New York, we have such great falls. I end up wearing the sunglasses right into winter. So we've looked at the front of the car. It's painted a beautiful maroon with vermilion red wire wheels. Let's look at the engine. Henry was very proud of his flathead V8, as he very well should have been. Now, making a flathead V8 was never a problem, except it couldn't be die-cast in one piece. But in order for Ford to make them inexpensively and keep up with his production ability, the engine had to be made quickly, efficiently, rapidly, in order to keep up with the line. So casting this in one piece was a real foundry problem. So after weeks of trying, Henry went down to the foundry and worked hand in hand with the men in the foundry, and he was responsible for casting the first one. Now after they cast it, in order to keep the movement swift, it was necessary to design a machine that would grind the top of the manifold and grind both heads all at the same time. After that it continued to another machine that they had to invent that would bore all eight cylinders, bore all 16 valves where the guides go, and all 21 stud holes on both sides and thread them in order to keep it moving as quick as possible. All of that was accomplished in less than five minutes, allowing him to produce many for flathead VA Fort. He also wanted a lightweight engine with a short stroke to make it like a sprint machine so it had a fast takeoff, would move along the highway at what that time was highway speeds, very quickly. This made it a very inviting car for people who wanted to get away quick, like bank robbers. Most famous of which was 
Bonnie and Clyde. Now Clyde Burroughs enjoyed Fords so much that he, he used to write Henry Ford letters about the latest Ford that he stole and congratulate him on making such a fine, inexpensive automobile that was both durable, fast, fuel efficient, and handled well. If you remember, Bonnie and Clyde were both killed in a 1934 Ford, Ford or sedan, not by accident, but by the efforts of the FBI, setting up a road trap for him and killing both Bonnie and Clyde. I'll move on here. This is a cabriolet, not a roadster. A roadster does not have roll-up windows. A cabriolet has roll-up windows. That's the basic difference. The roadster uses screens with celluloid inserts, which become scratched, cracked, and impossible to see on. But the cabriolet has a roll-up window like the convertibles that we know today. It has a very inviting front seat. Very comfortable weather, tight front seat. And the cabriolet having the roll-up windows, when everything was shut up, it was it kept the rain and the cold weather out as much as possible. We have the wire wheels. Wire wheels were run on Ford from the end of the Model T right up to 1935. Wire wheels are very strong. They're like a suspension bridge. The weight of the car is actually hanging on these wires. In an all steel body. The rumble seat. The nice thing about a rumble seat, you can have a very fashionable two seater personal car. And then when the need arose, you could open the rumble seat and two more people could go with you on the trip. It's inserted in the center of the convertible top, unzips, drops down, so communications can exist between the two. On the back, we have the spare tire mounted. The spare tire is a 17 inch tire, 525, 550 by 17. There's five Firestone Deluxe Champ tires. Henry Ford and Harvey Firestone were fast friends, and Henry bought almost all his tires from Harvey. Now, when a man's making a million cars a year, that's five million tires. That constitutes a very good customer. Now, of course, if you're buying five million tires a year, you're not paying $18 or $20 a tire. I know in the 50s, when I was selling automobiles, we were told that if we could sell the white wall tire option, which was $18 at the time, that that $18 paid for all five tires on the car. So it was, a, it was free tires for the manufacturer. But this is our 1934 Ford. Thank you for your interest in it. My name is Terry Young. I run the Classic Car Center in Orchard Park, New York. My phone number is 716-830-4224. My website is tycc.net. Come and look at the car or send your agent. If you send your agent, send them with a check because you don't want to miss out on this car. When you see this car and drive this car, you're going to fall totally in love with this 34 Ford. You'll have something that you won't see at every car show. Thank you again for your interest. Please stop by and see us. Any questions, call me at 716-830-4224. Check my website, tycc.net, or send me an email, tyoung9624 at aol.com. Again, thank you very much for your interest.